everybody, it's Kathy Champion and you're back in my craft room at Random Acts of Crafting. Welcome in. Uh, today, as promised, I want to start a series on embossing. Um, I think that embossing is probably one of the most misunderstood things in crafting. And the reason I say that is because there are so many different ways you can emboss. Um, when I first started out in my paper crafting journey, and it is a journey because you start out knowing nothing and you build onto your knowledge daily um, from watching YouTube videos like mine or other people. And I'll be the first one to tell you, there are other people out there that are way more advanced than I am. Uh, there are people that teach better techniques than I do. But I like to just share. I won't say that I'm teaching. I'm just sharing with you what I have learned through my journey. And hopefully it will help you in your journey. Um, I do like to take a very slow approach to my teaching. For my sharing and today I thought that we would um, look at embossing folders everybody knows what embossing folders are they are these little plastic folders that have a raised up uh, area one side is more raised than the other and when you put your paper in between them it presses that uh, indentations into your paper so you put you put your paper in you run it through a uh, die cut machine or an embossing machine like my revolution which y'all have seen so I'm going to do the butterfly and I'm just going to show you without doing anything special just putting your paper in like this closing it up and I'm going to lay it on I'm going to bring my bit my uh, revolution over so you can see exactly what I'm doing. This is my base plate with my magnetic mat. I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to use my embossing uh, plate or it's really a flimsy little piece of plastic but it works beautifully. So I'm going to lay that over top of my embossing folder and I'm just going to crank this through. Now this is the simplest form to me of embossing is just to use a um, embossing folder with your embossing machine. Oops, and of course I dropped my entire sandwich out, but that's okay. I didn't hit my puppy dogs and that's the main thing. <laughs> They're usually right here under my feet. So when you pull this out, this is what you have and I'm hoping I don't know if my light is catching that this morning or not, but you have this raised and lowered edge. My butterflies are, I'll tell you what, let me drag some ink over top of this and you will see what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to take my ink and I'm going to drag it. And now you can see where those raised areas were. And now this technique is called ink dragging. And this is one of the simple ways of doing. And usually if you're going to ink drag, you're going to drag three colors. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab a green. And you'll just drag that over it. Brings in a little bit more color. And then let's do a... Let's do a blue. And everybody always says that third color is what makes it come to life. And there you go. There is your three colors of ink dragging. I used warm lipstick, um, mermaid lagoon, and cracked pistachio. So this is one way of embossing, and I'm going to bring this up so you can see it a little better. And that was done with this um, embossing folder. And I'm not even sure what brand this was. This is one that I've had in my stash for a while. Um, I'm not real sure. But that's one way of, of embossing. Another way to emboss I'm going to use this particular folder and this 
when you open up your folder, you can feel you have more flat area on one and more raised on the other. On this one where I have more of the flat, I am going to take um, I'm going to take another color. I'm trying to decide. I think I'm going to do this lavender. And this is shaded lilac. And this is going to pick up for our background. Now we're doing it on that smoother side, not the bumpy side. So anytime you open up one of your embossing folders, you're going to have a real bumpy side and you're going to have a smoother side. We're putting this ink down on our smooth side. And you just want to rub that ink and you can see it's picking it up on the background. And this is exactly what we want. I want to cover this background and I am just going to cover it. This is a very light, beautiful shade of lilac. So I'm going to close that back up and I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock and I'm just going to lay it in about there. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to close that folder over it. I'm going to my embossing machine. I'm going to lay this in, use my embossing mat over it, and I'm going to crank it through. I didn't feel like I needed to do all of these on camera. And I'm going to run this back through to make sure we get a good um, impression. And I'm going to pull this out. And now when you open this up, you're going to have this beautiful lilac color. I don't know why my lighting is not good today. Let me bring it down just a little bit. See if, yeah, there you go. Maybe my lights were just a little too bright for that. But that is gorgeous. Look how beautiful. And then you've got that raised white and it looks like you you had a piece of lilac paper and you ink dragged it in white but it's not it is just done with that folder now what you always want to do after you um, use ink on your embossing folders i usually take a little hand sanitizer and rub it on one of these magnetic mats i mean microfiber cloths and then I just go in and clean it up, just like that. Because you want to make sure that this folder has no ink residue on it when you use it next time. Because next time you use it, you may just want that raised area uh, for the background of a card, and you may not want color. That's what's so nice about your embossing folders. Again, I will tell you that your... Um, your die cut embossing machine is an investment. It's not cheap, but you will be able to do so much with it. Your embossing folders, if you take good care of them, they will last forever. This is why, and these are very inexpensive. You can pick these up, you know, a couple bucks. Um, Tuesday morning has a, a vast array of um, embossing folders. I think this one I got it uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, this was I think this was this one was a Crafter's Companion. There's a lot of different brands out there. Doris carries a lot. Um, I have uh, embossing folders in my store. I'm going to be getting some more in. Um, I'm busy right now clearing out my Christmas um, items and getting ready to restock. I have stuff coming in next week, Monday and Wednesday. I've got uh, two good size orders coming in. So I'm real excited about all the new stuff. Okay, so we, we, we saw how we can do this. Now we can go back and go a step further. If you wanted to paint your roses, you could grab your um, Nouveau markers and you could use either tip I like to use my fine tip. Um, it gives me a little bit more control. And I'm going to zoom y'all in so you can see. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to color this rose right here. 
I am going to grab my little bifocal glasses so that I can see a little better. Um, that helps me to be able to get in here. But you can color these and not worry about going out of the line because they are raised up. So these petals are all raised up. So you can come in and put color where you want it. Isn't that, isn't that neat? And you can come up in here and get that little fold of the rose. I just, you know, I really wanted to teach y'all some new techniques, some ways that you can use your folders, your inks, your markers. Um, and these are just beautiful. And if you wanted to know what color marker I'm using, these are the rosy pinks, and this is 449. But if any florals that you have, um, you can come in. You can also use your ink pads. Just use the corner of your little ink pads. Uh, these Distress inks. Um, I have some Nuvo Hybrid inks coming in. And they're going to, I have the minis as well as the larger ones. Those, I can't wait to get them in and try them and show y'all how beautiful they are. So look at that rose. Just by coloring that rose in, look how much more dimension it gives to this. And you can come in with your greens and color your leaves in. This, if you wanted to change your roses up and make them different shades, I mean, the possibilities of this are endless. I'm going to go with a little bit more of an amber color. This is Tiger Lily. And this is 374. And I'm going to go in right here. And look how pretty that's coloring. And we all know that roses are not the same hues. You know, if you're artistic enough, you could go in and shade these um, where they all look totally different. Your centers, your outer leaves, petals, not leaves, these are petals. But look how beautiful that is. All done with just um, an embossing folder, some ink, and um, a, a, some markers. And you could use any markers. It doesn't have to be. Let's try the, um, let's try a Tombow marker and see how that works on it. <clears throat> I have not tried this. This is my favorite red in the Tombows. So I think I'm going to go in here and do this little rose. Let's try this. I hope I'm not in the camera with my head. see how easy this is to color and you don't have to worry about going out of line because these are raised up I think it's gorgeous I love the way these look um, here's another one this is a very tiny one right here Look how pretty that is. Now, if you wanted to go and do, um, going back to the Nuvos, because y'all know I love my Nuvos, if you wanted to go in with something like this, let's try using the um, chisel tip rather than your fine tip. And let's just see if we can go over it like this. This would give you a good coverage that would be very quick by doing it that way. Let's try this little one. Oh yeah, look how quick that picks up there and covers. Um, I'm going to grab a different color. Like I said, I thought it would be so pretty to have some different colored roses on here. Now if you wanted to go all one color, you very well could do that too. Uh, 
let's try let's try a lavender I don't know how the lavender is going to look since I've got this oh this is a deep this is pretty oh yeah I love it let's go ahead and do this one right here This little one right here. And I want to do a red. I want a different red. And I'm thinking maybe this plum tomato. Let's try this big one right here in the plum tomato. And like I said, I haven't done this technique a lot. Um, I just thought this would be a beautiful way to show you how you could make. Um, now, I don't know that I like the colors mixed like this, but I'll tell you what I would love. I would love to do this and just do the roses in a very faint light color, either this pink, a blue, um, a lavender. I think they would be gorgeous like that. But this is just one technique of how you can use your markers, use your embossing folders to get um, a beautiful effect. Now here's two different ones. The last one I want to show you is music notes. Now we all love music notes on the background of our cards. That's why this, this is a Darice. Um, my Darice, I think, is just about worn off. I've had this folder for quite some time, but it does look like a Darice. Now, again, when you open these up, you will feel one side that's flat. It's not completely flat, so don't let that flat um, confuse you. One side is much more raised than the other side. So if you're going to do your background paper, this is where you want your ink to go for this. So I am going to go with a more muted color. Let's do... Mm, trying to decide. I want a pale pink. Um, so let's do our tattered rose. This is a very pale, I need to zoom y'all back out, sorry. About right there. I'm going to do this distressed ink in the tattered rose. And I'm going to pop my color off. And again, making sure you're putting your ink, because we want this to show up on our paper. So I am going to get some of this stuff out of my way. Making sure, now this is the more raised side, this is the flatter side. And after you watch this video, you may want to go and grab an embossing folder and kind of do your feel and see if you can see what I'm talking about. I'm sure you will. The minute you open up your folders, you are going to see that this is... Um, this one side is definitely not as raised as the other and that's the side you want to use for your um, inking. Now I'm going to lay this in here just like this, closing it up. I'm going to take it to my die cut machine and I'm going to put it in and I'm just going to run it through and run it back. Here's one that I did earlier, um, like this one, and I did it in a green background. I did all my roses the same color. I started doing some of the leaves, and I did some of the stems. So you can see um, how pretty that is. So, uh, little messages coming in. Alright, so let's pull this one over and let's look at it and see what we got. Let's 
So see, that's just a very faint look on that um, the background paper. Now, if you wanted to make that darker, you could put it. You could re-ink it, lay it back in there, just like you did. Uh, you need to be very careful in in placement. Uh, so you know, if you see that you want that darker, maybe next time you do this, you put more ink down. Because your, your distressed um, inks are not going to be as vibrant as your oxides. That's just the rule of the, the nature of the beast. So let's clean this folder up. So I'm just going to use my same towel. And if you've got a really good microfiber, you may not even have to put any hand sanitizer in there at all. I do it just to make sure that I don't leave any residue, but I have a little bit of, of uh, sanitizer still on this um, folder, I mean on this cleaning towel, so I got it up, no problem. And you can usually, when you turn it over and look at it like that, you can see if you've got any residue ink, and that one looks really good, so we're good with that. Alright, so now what I want to do is come back and I want to use a darker ink and I'm going to ink drag. So let's use this blue and let's see if we, you know what I would love to do, let me see if I have this little one in a black. And I don't think I do. I do have it in a forest moss and I think that's the darkest color that I have in the little one. So I'm just going to stick with this Mermaid Lagoon because we know that it is pretty dark. I think I want to go with that one. Or do I want to do warm lipstick? No, I'm going to go with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up here at the top and I am just going to come across the musical notes just like that picking up all of that beautiful raised surface. Now there's another embossing folder that you could use as a background on a card. What I would do with this is I'd cut this down to four and a quarter by um, no, four inches by four and I mean by five and a quarter and then I would put this on the background or the mat of my card and then I would use my embellishments. I think this is a very pretty piece. I think this would be a piece you could use um, as well as that. I'm not real crazy about this one but there you go. There are our pieces. And hopefully I have taught you a technique on how to use uh, some embossing folders. And again, if you did not want to um, emboss and you wanted to go with just a plain uh, floral background, you can do that just by putting your paper in, running it through, just like this. And you can have a beautiful background that is raised up and it makes a statement in a very subtle way. So there's all your ways of using inks, techniques, some markers, and building your um, backgrounds, your mats, um, to meet your needs. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I have showed some ink dragging in the past, but I had not shown how to do the background. So that was something that was a little new. I hope with each video that I bring you, you can take away another little technique, another um, another bit of information that you can tuck away into your crafting um, mind folder, I guess we could say. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. I hope that you will uh, try this technique at home. And uh, I wish you all a very, very um, happy Friday. It is Friday. Yay! <laughs> Our New Year week is over. And next week we'll, we can buckle down and start in 
to a brand new week of uh, getting down to the nitty gritty, doing some beautiful paper crafting and uh, some new techniques. So in my next series, I'm going to bring you embossing powders and all the different ways we can use inks, embossing powders, and even embossing folders with our um, emboss in our heat embossing. So for heat embossing you do need some equipment. You need the embossing heat gun, you need a Versamark ink pad, and you need of course your embossing powders. So that one is a little bit more complex. It costs a little bit more to do that one because you do need the equipment. But even with this you need equipment because you need an embossing machine. So I wish you all a very happy, merry, uh, sunshiny day, although it's very wet and cloudy and dreary here. I love you all so much. God bless you. Let everything you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. God bless. And until we craft again, I love you all. Bye-bye.